On today's show, we bring you news of what has to be the most affordable, highway capable car to ever go on sale in North America. GMC gets ready to reveal the Hummer EV Ute this autumn, and the Sony Vision S Electric edges ever closer to maybe, just maybe, becoming a production car. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope that you and yours are safe and that your week has been a most excellent one. Thank you for joining me. One of the most consistent criticisms of electric vehicles is that they are just too darned expensive to buy. While the cost of buying a new electric car has dropped significantly in the last 10 years, you still can't get an entry-level electric car at entry-level car prices. This could be about to change though, with Candy USA announcing that it's going to begin sales of the Chinese-made four-seat Candy K27 electric car this year. The starting price? $20,499 on the road before any incentives. While it's not exactly powerful, Candy says it has a top speed of 63 miles per hour and a 100 miles claimed range. There's no rapid charging, but if you're desperate to get on the road in an electric car, this could be one possible option. The order books open on August 18th. Lucid continued its drive towards launching the Lucid Air luxury sedan this week by confirming that at launch, Every Lucid Air will come with Lucid Dream Drive, its own variant of Autopilot, a system that uses both LiDAR and driver monitoring and has a claimed first for the industry. Dream Drive will be upgradable via over-the-air software updates. Lucid says that the Lucid Air will initially ship with level two autonomous capabilities at launch, but will be able to get level three and beyond in the future via over-the-air updates. While it seems to be following a similar path to Tesla's autopilot development, starting with lower levels of autonomy before upgrading in the future, it's worth noting that Lucid's system tracks driver attention. Autopilot only currently checks for their hands on the wheel. Since Tesla cancelled plans to make Model Y Standard Range and Standard Range Plus, we've been waiting for news of a new promised entry-level model, the Tesla Model Y Long Range Rear Wheel Drive. This week, we got the first piece of news relating to that, but not what you might expect. You see, Electrek reported midweek that while the Model Y Long Range Rear Wheel Drive hasn't appeared yet on Tesla's configuration tool, it now appears in Tesla's loan calculator, it has a sticker price of 48,000 US dollars. That's only $2,000 or so less than the Tesla long range all wheel drive and $3,000 more than the $45,000 price that Elon Musk has been bandying about. Since pricing isn't official yet though, that figure could change. And I'm guessing that this might just be a temporary placeholder until final launch information is confirmed. Following what was a pretty uninspiring launch event earlier this summer, one which was frankly more of a political rally than a car launch, Lordstown Motors has published a video showcasing some of the things it hopes the Lordstown Endurance pickup will ultimately be used for. Rather than go for the high-end luxury adventure market like Rivian has done, Lordstown is aimed squarely at self-employed people, small business owners and fleet operators. And as a consequence, the video, which has a working man narrative, highlights the types of duties that people may use a pickup truck for. It is great to see more video of the endurance in motion, but this is still a prototype as I understand it. And there's still an awful lot of things we don't yet know about this new pickup. Come on, guys, give us a spec sheet. Talking of pickups, General Motors GMC brand is continuing its ramp up towards the big reveal of the rebirth of the Hummer brand. And now we have an expected reveal date for this autumn. Publishing a new teaser video this week, GMC confirmed that production of the Hummer EV truck will begin a year after its pre-production debut in 2021. 
The latest video shows a silhouette of the truck for the first time, and it's most certainly taken on that classic Hummer design. There's high arches, boxy lines, and that unmistakable long, flat roofline. With up to 1,000 horsepower and 11,500 pound-feet of torque, this truck will be built for power and performance, and GM is claiming a 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 3 seconds. We'll bring you more info when we have it. When COVID-19 hit the United States, the US federal government passed a massive stimulus act designed to not only provide tax breaks to families, but also, on paper at least, provide tax breaks and forgivable loans to businesses so that they could continue to pay their employees, even if their places of business were temporarily shuttered. We've covered some of the companies that have taken those funds on this channel before, but this week we learned, via an SEC filing, that Tesla was also a recipient of the federal funding. The funds helped Tesla offset any of the losses it incurred due to the Fremont facility being closed for six weeks. But where it gets controversial is the fact that Elon Musk himself has been speaking out against further federal bailouts, stating on Twitter this week as the effects of the previous act are coming to an end, and people are now facing both unemployment, no assistance, and perhaps even no home, that, quote, another stimulus package is not in the interests of the people. Hmm. The second-generation Kia eSoul, or Soul EV, depending on where you are in the world, is already proving popular with customers. And those who have driven them in markets where it's on sale, like in Canada, Europe, and parts of Asia, are very complimentary. Yet this week, it seems Kia has yet again pushed back any plans to launch the new Kia eSoul in the US. It's cancelled plans for a late 2020 launch and is telling news outlets that it won't arrive until at least 2021. While Kia isn't saying for sure if the eSoul has been completely cancelled for the US, evidence online, namely a removal of a dedicated web page for the car, seems to suggest that Kia has indeed decided it's not going to make the eSoul available anymore. Since it's already on sale in Canada, this is particularly frustrating to see the model pushed back again. Earlier this week, we published a video discussing why the Tesla Model 3 was not selling well in Japan when it was dominating sales charts elsewhere in the world. And to do that, we used 2019 sales data as the basis for that statement. But data published this week, which many of you noted in the comments, show that the Tesla Model 3 is no longer the leader in plug-in car sales in Europe. Instead, the Renault Zoe is overtaking it by a significant margin. During the month of June, the Renault Zoe came out top in the plug-in sales charts, selling 10,342 examples to the Model 3's 7,224. But that's not all. Overall, European car sales fell during June, down 24% year-on-year. But plug-in sales grew 95% year-on-year, setting new records for all plug-in sales. Well done, guys. As you may know, I am a fan of travel on two wheels, and I think there's nothing better for travel around major cities than an electric motorcycle or moped. And having experienced the thrill of renting a moped and traveling around San Francisco for a day, thanks, Scoot, I expected new rental moped share service in New York, now by the name of Revel, to take off pretty quickly. But the service has just announced it's temporarily suspending all of its rentals after a second death involving its scooters in as many weeks. It's not clear why the fatalities happened, and I will say that having driven in New York, I'd never want to ride there myself, as New Yorkers seem not quite as motorcycle friendly as they are in other cities around the world. As I've said before, I think motorcycle and moped share services are best enjoyed when you're already an experienced rider. I suspect when you're not an experienced rider, things can go bad very quickly. On behalf of the entire team, we send our sympathies to those who've died. In the last couple of years, there's been a real explosion in the number of specialist firms building capable, affordable electric two-wheelers. And New Zealand-based Ubico is just one example. But instead of your standard rear-wheel drive motorcycle for just getting around town, Ubico makes off-road capable all-wheel drive electric utility bikes. They dominate where most electric motorcycles and scooters would simply give up. 
And this week we learned that the New Zealand Defence Force is trialling these homegrown electric bikes for off-road use in the military. The New Zealand Army, Navy and Air Force will each get to test them out. And because they're far lighter than most motorcycles and even most electric motorcycles, these electric mopeds are ideal for use as they can be lifted into and out of other vehicles and airplanes extremely easily. And finally, back in January before COVID-19 spoiled all of our plans for the year, we were present when Sony surprised the world with its Vision S electric car. Described as a, quote, technology demonstrator to showcase all of Sony's automotive hardware operating in one place, we were told at the time that Sony had no plans to bring the Vision S to market. But in recent months, we've seen several times a hint that maybe just maybe that's changing, with Sony delivering the car to engineers in Tokyo this week for public road testing. Originally, Sony said that it had no plans to put the Vision S onto any public highway, so this is extremely exciting news. It also suggests that maybe, just maybe, Sony could end up making a car after all. With dual 200 kilowatt motors and impressive performance, well, I just want to ride. How about you? And on that optimistic note, let's end today's show there. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you've got that browser window open, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you're going to help New Zealand wean itself off all of its dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will help keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. And don't forget, the Model Y is still doing winter testing in the South Island. So if you're there and you see one, let us know. We'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, remember to stay safe, wash your hands and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.